Certainly the issue of housing for disabled adults is one where coming to a resolution has posed to be an enormous challenge. The emotions, the needs so varied that pleasing everyone may seem almost impossible. Well, join me now to share both his position as elected official as also someone very connected to this issue is State Senate uh, President Steve Sweeney. Senator, I appreciate a few minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Um, you once uh, told me uh, one of the reasons why you got into elected office. Uh, why don't you tell the audience, because this isn't just a, uh, a legislative debate for you. This is something that's very personal. No, it, it's, it, it's very personal to me. I got into politics for one reason. Um, I had a daughter born with Down syndrome, and I didn't like the way people with disabilities were treated. And even though there's laws in place, sometimes they just, well, a lot of times they're not even enforced or supported. I decided to do something about it. A lot of people talk about, well, they need to change this. The only way you can change things and the only way you can fix things is to be part of the process. So uh, that's why I ran for office, to ensure that disabled people are treated with respect and the same rights that we, that we want to have. So, uh, you know, this issue is obviously a very, very close one to me uh, because of what's involved and what it means. And, uh, you know, I know there's a great debate over closing centers, not closing centers, uh, what's best for the disabled adults. And there is no simple answer, and it's not a one-size-fits-all. I, I think the governor recognizes that we need to address housing. Uh, we need to do a better job of housing in the state. We have a long waiting list. But the developmental centers are housing for some of these develop, uh, disabled adults. And the big concern that I have is, you know, if someone's lived in a place for 30 years and that's the only thing, the only place they know, and that's their home, you could have dramatic, a dramatic impact on those individuals. My daughter's fine. She's 19. She's going to be 19 this month. But someday she's going to need to live somewhere. You can't always depend or count on family just to say, I'll accept and, you know, I'll take, I have a son. Hopefully my son will take care of my daughter. But, you know, you don't know if you can place that responsibility once he starts having his family or is living his life. So, you know, there, there really comes a time where government absolutely has to play a role here because this is the safety net that government is supposed to provide to ensure that my daughter is going to have a quality life and a safe place to live. Because, you know, disabled people are very trusting. Uh, sometimes because they're disabled, when they, when they say something, it's not looked at as real. So, you know, again, there's a great concern for me to ensure that whatever we do, we protect, uh, we protect our loved ones. You know, I'll admit I came to this issue in the last six months um, uh, kind of, uh, this is a, a totally different issue. I certainly haven't lived it as you have for 19 years now or certainly seen and heard what you have in the legislature, but I think there isn't any uh, bad actors in this. Everybody has good intentions, but when you see a community center and you see a developmental center, they're not the same thing, and all patients are not the same people. The passion and the frustration from families at these developmental centers that they're not being heard and they're kind of being talked to, not talked with, uh, it's been palpable, Senator. I, I don't know if you've heard the same kind of feedback, but they think that this thing's getting pushed along and they won't get to say anything until it's almost decided. Really, it's a choice issue. And you have to provide options so that families don't feel like this is the only this is the only place, this is the only thing that is available. Because that's a real bad feeling when you don't have an option uh, for your loved ones. So, you know, I think there are all good actors in this, to be perfectly honest. From the governor, I recognize he's, he's, he's uh, you know, he's, he's serious about d trying to do the right thing for the disabled community. Commissioner Velez, same thing. The commissioner, I think, wants to do the very best. We all do. But we got to listen to the families, because the families actually know what is best. I think we put the cart before the horse when we announced we were going to make these closures without studying them. Uh, do we close? Which ones do we close? How many do we close? How many, how many beds are needed projecting out in the future so that we don't have a crisis? Because the 8,000 families 
actually that are on this list don't trust government's going to do the job. Before I let you go, Senator, and I know we got to let this play out, but is it your sense that there'll be some form of happy medium at the end? I, I absolutely see something happening, uh, you know, again, where, where choice is preserved. I don't know what the product will look at at the end, but I, I think that families will have options when we're done. Again, there's no one, no one in this is not Republican or Democrat. There is no one looking at it in a partisan way. Uh, we, we just got to come to the best way of ensuring that we provide a safe environment for our loved ones once they become adults. Senator, I appreciate a few minutes. Thank you so much. Opinions about housing for developmentally disabled adults are strong on both sides of the issue, no doubt. But in the end, though, lawmakers, they're going to be making the final decision. Assemblywoman Valerie Veneri Huddle, she serves as chair of the Human Services Committee, and she joins us now from Englewood, New Jersey. Assemblywoman, thank you so much for a few minutes. You're quite welcome. You know, when I was researching this, uh, attached your name was the voice for the voiceless. And while obviously that's a nice compliment to have, I think it also speaks to some of the frustration families have that they don't believe there's enough champions uh, for their family members or for this population. Uh, you serve on a committee that would know. Is, is that a fair assessment? Well, I think the frustration with family members today in New Jersey is there are 8,000 members on that waiting list to either get into uh, community housing or actually into the developmental centers. So when you have a wait list of that long, it does feel that there isn't any champions out there. And especially when during these budgetary times, uh, we need to prioritize the dollars for housing and for services for the developmentally disabled. For me, and obviously you've been doing this a lot longer um, than just our investigation, but it seems that there's a false choice going on out there. We've seen community centers and they seem terrific. We've been to developmental centers and People have been there for 30, 40, 50 years. Employees have been there. It's amazing how many that have been there for 30 years. They both seem to have a purpose in a place. The one thing that I get that, at least to the naked eye, seems to make sense is some people can maybe thrive in a community center envi environment that aren't there now, but there are some people that aren't remotely um, prepared or have the cognitive abilities to handle a community center, and they're not equipped to handle them. So the idea that you can live with one and not the other, I just don't think it adds up. And I think that's where we need to have choice, and that's what I have been advocating since I entered uh, into the legislature, because I have talked to all of those involved, all of the stakeholders, whether they be the family members, the actual clients or patients of the centers, or the advocates for community housing. I believe that exactly what you said, there are some members of the community that can do very well in independent housing. Even those members that you feel may need those services, they still can do well if they have those services provided in the community. And that's when it comes to the dollars and the budget. Uh, we need to prioritize those dollars. We cannot lose those dollars if those centers are closed, again, to plug the budget. They must go into the community, and we must have choice. And I feel, and I can tell you what was very compelling to me when I heard testimony, uh, one of, uh, a sister of a member of a developmental center sat there and said, not one of you up there on that panel knows what it's like to be in my shoes. Not one of you up there should make and should be able to make that decision for me. I am the only one that could make that for my sister. And I, and I understand that completely because if you have not stood in those shoes, or if you don't have experience firsthand, it is only they who should be able to make that choice, not legislators. So bottom line this for us, Assemblywoman, uh, how many of these developmental centers are actually going to be in the chopping block? All? Some? None? Will there be a final version that you're going to have community centers and developmental centers when it's all said and done? I don't know if how many is needed. We need to have a plan. We need to work with the Department of Human Services, the Governor's Council, and the family advocates to see where everyone should be placed for the to the best of their ability, ability and also to how they can um, flourish in society today. Don't forget, in New Jersey, there is a decision that people should leave in a, in a people with disabilities should be able to live in a least in the least restrictive environment. 
some of these centers may be the least restrictive for these for these family members and the old you know a uh, concept of institution if you visited any of the centers they have caring individuals and caregivers as employees that care for them every day there's routine there's consistency some of these community homes again there they may be turnover they may not have those safeguards in place and that's another thing that we will make sure that legislation is in place to safeguard the community living as well, to make sure that the caregivers are, um, are, are there to take care of them and, and meet, spe you know, meet criteria just like the centers do. So there is, again, we need to have a comprehensive plan to, for both options to remain in place to make sure our citizens, our most vulnerable citizens, are taken care of. Assemblywoman, thank you very much. I appreciate a few minutes. Thank you very much. And coming up next, everyone, giving voice to the voiceless, family members of people living in developmental centers, they will share their stories with us as well as their fears. So please stay right there. The special hour of RFL will be right back.